If you are wondering how to take the things you encounter and turn them into a captivating, unique, and finalized product, you'll get quite a bit out of this live note-making session with Eleanor Koenig. Eleanor studied ancient philosophy and religion before graduating law school, and through it all she keeps asking why, and writing every step of the way. She's also a natural teacher who kept me on my toes throughout the session trying to answer what a tribute is, what economy is, and why it all matters. In the following, Eleanor takes us on a note-making journey into how she researches, generates questions, makes connections, and creates products that she gets paid for. We'll see how she uses the powerful DataView plugin. And we'll leave with the creative process that works for writers of fiction, nonfiction, articles, and everything in between. Let's view Eleanor's inspiring process now. The reason we wanted to do this is because you had a really cool post on Obsidian. Uh, on the forums and it kind of took off and among other things you've been so active on those forums talking about your process for putting together um, articles and building worlds writing characters all these different things and and the people want to see it the people want answers so I, we just put this together really quickly yeah i think um you know in sort of knowledge management there's there's different stages there's the well, how do I collect all of the things that I found and make sure that I don't lose them because they're so important to me? And then there's the, how do I learn from it and process information and do something with it? And then there's that like other part that not everybody does and not everybody needs to do where you want to turn that into a product, whether it's a, you know, an academic paper or a blog post or a letter to your mother, which sometimes I do, um, a, a newsletter, whatever, whatever sort of product you want to do. The whole point of the Zettelkasten method, and I may be mispronouncing that, but the whole point of that method was that the the guy who came up with it was incredibly prolific as a producer. Like he wasn't just sort of sitting off in the corner keeping track of stuff for his own like you know personal little Gollum style miser, my precious. Like he wanted to share his thoughts with the world, and the Zettelkasten method is about keeping your thoughts so that they can be moved around and manipulated and turned into something. And I'm in a position where I have been blogging for years and writing articles, and I like to think they're pretty interesting. And apparently other people agree. So the, the steps of capture to processing to article in Obsidian, which is the software that I use, um, I, I think that that process and those steps is something that people like to see because it's, it can be hard to juggle a big process in your head like that and see how it all plays together and get ideas from other people. Like I've been hanging out in the Obsidian community for a couple of months now. And the way that I write articles has changed completely. Like I, I have become like four times as prolific as I was. I actually, um, I have like, I've, I'm in a position now where I'm sort of getting picked up for freelance gigs that I can't quite talk about yet, but they're very exciting. And uh, I'm like, I'm a staff writer now for, for um, World Building Magazine and like Obsidian and the, the Zettel Custom Process and linking your thinking and all of the you know all of the resources that you and the others have put together have just been incredibly helpful i actually spent some time this morning turning a big encyclopedia style note that i thought was how i wanted my information organized into atomic notes because i was like no actually this is this is way too much to process so like i'm you're convincing me you're bringing me over to your way of thinking and it's working um so i guess i guess let's get started on how i yeah. process information and turn it into articles wonderful i just let's have to say how in. excited i am Right. I'm just really excited to your point that there are so many ways to use um, links um, and you can track information like you can track what you ate, the meetings you had, the coffee you drank. I am less interested in that and I'm much more interested in um, creative uses or academic uses uh, or how those converge together. And so getting insight into your process here is, is just, I'm excited. Yeah, it's great. And to be fair, I also track stuff like how much I exercised and what I'm happy about. So like I, I do it all. But in this particular in this particular sort of video, let's focus on on the flow. So this is this is a book. This is an academic textbook that I got for Christmas because I'm a nerd and um, a friend got it for me. It's beyond the blue horizon, how the earliest mariners unlocked the secrets of the sea which you can't see, but so I, I start with the book. I enjoy reading academic texts. I think that's fun. I check out books from interlibrary loan that get shipped from like the Fort Meade library and the, you know, the, the army. And I, I like, 
I like some pretty nerdy stuff. And now that I've finished my master's degree, I don't have access to the university library anymore. So I have to find things other ways. Um, I, I do this process with paper, physical books a lot. I do it with PDFs, but for the purposes of showing you, it's easier if it's on the computer. But Obsidian Mobile plus Readwise, man, lets you go from a paper book to screenshots and voice chat for your notes in a very seamless way. So I highly recommend that when that drops out of beta. Oh. Um, but so anyway, so I'll start, I'll start with a book. This is a book, this is a page I haven't read. Um, and I, I read and I'm, I'm reading, looking for information that's relevant to me. The hardest part I think of note taking is, is what to take notes on, right? Like when you're reading a textbook or you're reading a book or you're reading a newspaper article or my students are reading their textbook or a paper that I gave them, the instinct is to highlight all the stuff because it's interesting and it's useful or it wouldn't be in the book. And the important thing is to know what you're trying to do with it, right? If you're just capturing everything that's interesting, you will never do anything in your life but capture information. And that, like, that's a choice. You can do that. People, people find joy in that. I'm not telling people how to live their life, but I personally like to have a product. So as I'm reading, I'm thinking of my purpose in mind and the thing that I like to write about and talk about and feel qualified to do anything with is history, infrastructure, the insights that I have about why things in society became the way they are. I look for, for wisdom from the ancients. I look for how I can take inspiration from history to write a book that hasn't been talked about before. I'm looking for new stuff, new insights that don't exist in other places. So as I'm reading, I'm looking about, I'm looking here and there's Islam in 1436, more and more of the South China Sea and the Indian Ocean trade pass through this port. And I don't care because as important as dates are and times are and places are and conversions are and people are when you're taking a memorization test in college, which seriously important, not trying to say it's not important, but that's not what I'm here for. So I have to shut all of those like school instincts out of my mind and stop caring about 1436 and the peninsula and start looking for patterns, pattern of trade flourished until the Portuguese. That reminds me of mm. some stuff I've read before, but it's really not that interesting. But Lamu, I've taught about, this is some nice stuff about the Phoenicians and Indians, but it's just not important, right? Like it's interesting, but it's not why I'm here. I'm here to learn something interesting, not just learn something. So I read, and here we go. The North Atlantic was the most formidable of all seascapes for mariners to decode, as were the English and the Irish seas, the North Sea and the Baltic. I didn't know that. Did you know that? Did you know that like the English seas were harder to navigate than any other part of the world? I had no clue. Do you know why? I know that the Atlantic uh, currents move northward and bring warm water. Other than that, I have no clue. Well, apparently there were no predictable shifts to allow an explorer safe passage home from an outward journey, mm. as opposed to the monsoon winds in India. So in India, into like the Swahili coast, the winds blow this way, and then they blow this way, and then they blow this way, and then they blow this way, depending on the season. Mm. In England, that's not the case. There are huge storms, pitiless rocks, strong tides, and onshore winds made pilotage close to land a risky venture even in calm southern weather. Wow. So I'm going to highlight this. And I'm also going to highlight the other part if it lets me, which it's not because, you know, why would Kindle ever contribute to something that I want to accomplish? <laughs> so the reason that I'm highlighting this is because, one, I can use this. Can you see this great note in the screen sharing, by the way? Okay, I'm just never sure how much to trust Zoom. So I can use this to create conflict in a story. When you're writing a story, you want something that's difficult, right? Like you don't want it to be easy for the characters. So this is a challenging environment. Seafarers. Challenge, so this, I could use this information. Great storms, pitiless rocks, strong tides, onshore winds. This is the conditions to make things hard for a sailor. Mm -hmm. 
So later, if I'm creating a linked list, create a map of content. Look at it, you, Nick. Create a map of content. Actually, I made a tag for this. Add MOC for difficult sailing conditions. So I know that I've come across a couple of other things that make sailing hard, right? Somewhere in these notes in this book probably exists some information for that. And I've come across enough things in this book that I'm pretty sure I can make a list of things that make sailing difficult, right? Like I can have an atomic note for that. That's the whole point. That's why we're here. We're looking for things we can take notes on that matter, that give us something to talk about. So rather than make you sit here while I read through the entire book, which I did not mean to do whatever I just did, I'm going well, to export all of my highlights. Yeah, that's using amazing. This nifty Readwise tool. So I have to do that the hard way because it's actually really annoying to get to highlights. From from the Kindle, right? Yeah. Yeah, you it's like find weird. find this one link. Yeah, it's weirdly difficult. So you can copy it to your clipboard if you have Flash Player installed, and I'm not doing that. But I can download it as a text file. And since I use Obsidian and everything's in a markdown file, they're basically the same thing. So I'm going to stop sharing this screen and find that file, move it over to Obsidian and then share that screen because I don't know how to share just a window. There we go. So you should be able to see my screen. And I mm -hmm. store all of my um, all of my like literature notes in a folder. And I know that people have opinions about folders. And I don't want to call it one of the personal knowledge management like holy wars because I think it's more like a perpetual agree to disagree. But um, I am personally a folder user. I, I just find it easier. I do enough with things that are other programs like concatenating all of my files and you know exporting things in different formats and using pandoc and like i i do too much to not have folders um there are I, reasons I, to do it either way everybody's different yeah i agree with you and just to that point the landscape it, it's the 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 sand beneath our feet is currently shifting and so the reason for not using folders with the whole zettel cost and uh boom from a few years back kind of moving into right now uh, it made uh the lack of folders like it made links the the first class citizen and what a lot of people did is they threw the baby out with the bathwater and said well that means folders are the bad guys the the bad people no more folders and it's and it's like well no actually they actually can still serve their their intended purpose which is to kind of wall off content from other content except you can still access it it globally with you know searches and links just and that's sort of how we have to shift our paradigm with how folders can be used along with links in a healthy system and along with the tags and whatever anyways yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah absolutely like it's just it depends on what you're doing if if all you have is atomic notes you don't need folders if you have atomic notes and also your articles and also your daily notes and also your pdfs and also like want to easily like separate out between different things folders are amazing folders are fantastic folders are life <laughs> <laughs> It's my position on the floor. Anyway, so I wind up with this handy dandy uh, data dump, really. It's it's almost useless in this form. Um, but you can see that I have been going through that book for a while. I've actually been reading it on my phone when I'm out and about. And it's stuff I haven't seen in a while, right? Like I've been reading this lengthy textbook for, frankly, since December. It's March. I've been reading it for the last three months. That's a long time to read a book. You're going to forget stuff, which is why the repetition of going back and reviewing your information is really important for pruning out things you don't need anymore, making sure the idea makes sense, etc. And this early stuff is actually before I realized that I could add annotations in Kindle. Annotations in Kindle are amazing. Oh. And hmm. these notes, you can see this is what I added. So what I like to do is I add headings. I know that people have opinions about block quotes versus headings, or, or not block quotes, block references versus headings. Like I, I, I find Obsidian to be a very heading centric tool and I think it's incredibly useful to give descriptive heading names to things. So I'm going to label it location 2509 because that's the location this was at. 
because I really like number names. I know that not everybody does, but I, I prepend with the location so that I can very easily type in words to the search when I'm using um, this feature. And I don't get every instance of cow. <laughs> so like, I, it's, it's a unique identifier, basically. Um, so this quote is about tribute. Tribute had arrived sporadically from countries on Zhang He's regular itinerary since the blah, 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 blah. Display of overwhelming military power, tributary relationship. So this looks like I was interested in the tribute economy of China. And you can see in the annotations, as I was annotating, I literally already had my links. Like I know that China was a page, even when I'm out, you know, getting ready to go to a doctor's appointment on my phone, I know that I have a page about China. So I don't have to do that now because I already did that. And I, this backwards mapping function is a dump file that I use just for collecting backlinks. That's not what I wanted. That was not the hockey I thought it was. Um, so this is just a place where I dump ideas. I just like, sometimes I have an idea of, wait, that thing that I just read reminds me of a book I read once. So I collect all of those and eventually I'm going to turn it into a long blog post on here's a book and here's a connection it has to a real life concept. Here's a fiction book, here's a real life concept. Whether that's the, um, vegeta the vegetarian spiders in uh, Adrian Tchaikovsky's book, like I, I found out the vegetarian spiders are real. That isn't that cool? Like vegetarian spiders. There's one species of spider that eats trees. I had no idea. I'm gonna use that because it's fascinating. Mm -hmm. Or like Lee Modisit has a book about um, where there are duarchies. And until I was studying Rome, I had no idea that there were like two or three governments in history that had co-rulers. Like co-rulers, that's a, that's a thing? Apparently it is. So I have this whole other like article I'm working on about co-rulers. Point being, I'm a big fan of these backlink dump file things because then I don't have to go update like the the file, right? Like I don't have to open the file and type into it. I've, I'm, I stay in the same file. I'm a big fan of working from the same file. And so that so backlinks the, mapping, that's a catch-all. So it might it might have a 50, it might have 100 mm -hmm. uh, you know, backlinks and then and then you can go to that when you're feeling creative and connective, and then you can connect it to where you need to. Is that exactly? And once okay. I've used it and I'm done with it, and like I've I've gotten everything out of it, I've I use it almost like a to-do list. I then delete the backlink, and it's not there anymore. Then I make it a forward link of I used this for you know, sure, thing, thing. But yeah, the ba backlinks are are key. So I have this note to myself about add MOC to economics. I wanted to add this thing about the tribute economy to my economics file. I have this lovely list of things related to economics that I made when all of my stuff about economics got too unwieldy. I make it a point to only make these kinds of files when the other stuff is unwieldy. Like if I start forgetting all of the times I've talked about something, then I make an index file. I don't just make an index file because I have two things on topic. That's what, this, that's what synthesis is for. Indexes are for when you get overwhelmed. Cool. Really, any change to your system is for when you get overwhelmed. Don't make work <laughs> just for the sake of making work. People do that and I don't get it. Um, so I had this thought as I was reading this section that tribute economy in China was, what was it doing? Was sporadic, was sporadic in the era of, and I'm actually including his name because he's a super important guy, basically because of this. So I have this other note here about the Yongli Emperor organizing expeditions. Why was he doing that? I don't remember, let's find out. Big chunks. Okay, this one was interesting because of the number of people commodities. You know what? I'm just going to search for tribute. Which is apparently a subword of other words, which I did not realize. <laughs> <laughs> 
So I've got a weirdly large amount of information about tribute. I don't want to limit myself to just China. I want to talk about tribute economies. I didn't realize I had so much information about tribute economies. And now I'm like curious, right? So tribute economies. Boom. Time to make a list. Tribute economies are an alternative to money. Incidentally, I just learned that trick today. Did you see that? I just dragged and dropped that link. Pretty amazing. I don't what else I got? That's amazing. Okay, so we've got this, let's see, L2509. Why didn't that work? Oh, because ha, I hit enter by accident. There we go. So we've got this about tribute economies. Just what have so I been saying about tribute economies? Hmm? Because I don't do the drag and drop that much. When you drag it in, even if, if it's a highlighted spot, you still have to then specify it in the note. If you if it's if it's the um the what's the word the if header, I specifically yeah. want the heading, yeah. There's actually a feature request for it not to be that on the forum. Okay, so give it a week. <laughs> give it a week, yeah. So apparently there is a some people used marriage as tribute. That's interesting. I forgot that I could just do this. Seriously, the features are amazing. So agricultural tribute is a thing. Interesting. What is tribute? What do you think it means? It's a, a gift of showing um, fealty or res, uh, respect. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, like, what does it mean? So when you're 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 a king, right? And you want tribute, people just give you stuff. Why? What do you do to earn tribute? Uh, well, you should provide protection, or you're you're at least uh, giving fear. I'd okay, say, so a combination of those among others. Why? Right? Like, why? Here's my question: Why? Why would someone pay tribute to an emperor? Let's brainstorm. Fear? To get something from the emperor? Are there other reasons? Like agreement, like maybe it's a contractual, like a treaty, like treaty peace agreement. I mean, that's really something from the, really it's all to get something from the emperor, right? If it's your fear, you don't want them to attack. Yeah, and in that same uh, subheader would be um, protection. So pr not just them attacking, but outside invaders, forces, people. Yeah. So like, what is tribute for? Let's see if I have anything else about this. Brotherhood of Kings, foreign powers. All right, let's see what we got. Yeah, hold on just a second. You did this before. I want to see what happened there. So the, the tribute that you just typed, um, yeah. can you show that again? How you did the... Yeah, um, so I I just dragged over link, yeah. and mm -hmm. then I hit the, uh, the carrot and then I just mm -hmm. typed tribute. Okay, to search because you know that's it's on the in that block. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, and then you can see it, it pops up with the bold. And then there's actually other uses, but that's contributed, which isn't as useful. And then there's actually this one that I had missed. The th only, the, see, the thing is, um, it doesn't, there's a bug that I reported today where you have to, you have to use the keyboard, you can't use the mouse. <laughs> Clicking it doesn't make it complete. Interesting, okay, so that's maybe Side. what I was, okay, gotcha. So yeah, I, I did the same thing here where I clicked it. It's so my instinct to click it. You have to actually use the- keyboard. Okay, yeah, I, I saw that and I was <laughs> like, oh, what am I not knowing? Yeah, so, so now I have these things and I'm gonna just straight like use it as a workbench. Click, click, click. I know sliding panes is better. I just don't like them. Oops. Okay, so tribute. You know what? This is lame. 
specifically Zoom is like, like it's not letting me get to the thing. All right. All right so alternatives to money. Tribute. These are different kinds of economies, right? Because like, everybody's like, oh, we trade you one gold coin in a video game, right? Like it's always, here's a gold coin. The only game I've ever played where they don't use some, here's a silver coin, here's a gold coin, here's a dollar, here's a credit, right? Like they're all currency. Currency is boring. Why, why is it always currency? Right, like in the dis in the in the Discord for Obsidian in this community, no one is paying dollars in exchange for things. We are we are paying it forward. We are we are a community who who pays back by giving our time. Right, like people help me solve my problems because I help other people solve their problems. Like mm -hmm. we're a community. We don't need dollars. You don't have to pay me seven dollars because I made a plugin, and then I pay somebody else six dollars to fix a bug. Like. That's not the economy that, that Obsidian runs on. It runs on decency and connections and like how we help each other. Hmm. So it doesn't have to be dollars. What are the other kinds of economies? Well, there's the, if you give me thing I want, I will protect you. There's, you know, I will send out a whole bunch of stuff to you. If you then have a reason to send me stuff, I will send you stuff because when you send me stuff, it makes me look good in front of all of the other, you know, important people in my community. When people do stuff for me, that makes me have more prestige. There's that kind of economy, the prestige economy. There's this really horrifying economy of who is allowed to marry whose daughters that was a thing in the Levant in the like Bronze Age. <laughs> I see your face. <laughs> it's a thing. It's a total thing. It's actually like not as bad as I'm making it sound. But um, the, the economy of who is married to who, the economy of who is your family. Like I say economy like it's a bad thing, but you help people who are connected to you. And what what is an economy except for a way to regulate who owes who what? Really, that's what an economy is, right? Like, what's what it's supposed to be? I'm not arguing. Yeah. So, I... like, in a in a way, family connections are a sort of like economy is the wrong word, but it's it's that same thing of who owes who what. Like who owes who respect in a family? Who, owes who what? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, does it have to be my mother? My mother gave me fifty dollars to fix her computer, and I gave my mother fifty dollars because she, no, no, like I I fixed my mom's computer, right? Like my mom didn't pay me to fix her computer. I helped my mom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In a complex society, money is how you you say I earned help. Right? Like, I earned help eating. Give me food so I can eat. I am helping you with, you know, your computer problem. Give me dollars so that I can exchange it for someone else to help me. Like, money and economies make things... Fluid? Work. Flexible? Fluid, yeah. They make, things, they make things work in a complex society. Does that mean that not... There, that there's not an economy in a in a small no the econ the currency is is help, right? Like the mm -hmm. currency of Obsidian is the Obsidian community is in some ways your contributions, which are how you help people. And the more mm -hmm. you help people, the more likely you are to get helped. And everybody starts out with a certain amount of like you know. Everybody starts out with a metaphorical, like, you know, everybody joins with 50 metaphorical dollars that you can spend getting help. But after a certain point, if you only asked questions and they were really hard questions, people would like, you know, eventually stop helping you. Mm -hmm. like, I don't, I've never seen that happen, but I have to assume that that would be what happens, right? Like you ask a whole bunch of annoying questions and you don't help anybody back. You there's try their patience. Yeah, like mm -hmm. there's a currency there and the currency is like human decency and we don't think about it, but economies are complicated. And this, this is how I make MOCs. Normally I would have dictated that into a phone. I'm gonna run a voice record thing about this later. But like, that's that's how you go from, you know, I was reading a thing in a note to the fundamental nature of economies. What is an economy? What is a tribute economy? It's all of this stuff. And now I have a map of content. Wow. Well, that's pretty great. Yeah. I, I'm like, gee, 
is Eleanor quizzing me or does she know the answer? Does she know where she wants to go? But no, I mean, I, you're, I you're, you're forming this a... as, as you're going. Yeah, and, yeah, and that's, that's how I think. I mean, that's the beauty of putting together a workbench type of map of content where you can throw these things in here and have these ideas start to, to um, battle each other, to, to kind of interact, exchange information. Uh, uh, wow, that's really great. So can communities have their own currency favors help, etc. So this is going to become an article seed. Right? And mm -hmm. then I'm going to add this to my economics note about tribute economies. Okay. So Great. so you've you've connected <laughs> so you've connected what you just did there. And before you lose it, before you go on your way, you you decide, you know, I have this pre-existing web of, of knowledge and let me kind of like tether it to those to those areas so that if I'm if you're in the um, article writing state trying to choose an article, you can find it there. You can find it directly if you knew exactly to search for tribute economies or you can find it more broadly just by searching economies and then seeing it in this list. So you're giving yourselves avenue, several avenues of rediscovery of re-retrieval is that accurate yeah, absolutely like i want to be able to find that again and i'm not gonna just like sit down and be like oh yeah i i had that on my to-do list my to-do list is enormous <laughs> like <laughs> i function by not putting things like that on my to-do list if i put every idea i had for an article on a to-do list i would only ever make to-do lists <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's well said yeah i haven't heard that before but yeah but you know, now I have a note that I will totally be able to find again if I'm ever looking for article and blog ideas. I have I use Data View to uh, help myself with that. So I have an index that I don't have to manually update because as much as you know, maps of context and indexes are interesting and useful, I don't enjoy manually updating them. So I use the new data view plugin and it just pulls every single article that I have filed as a article, what it's for, where I'm going to put it for. I write for a couple of different outlets or, you know, aspire to write for a couple of different outlets, but I also use the backlinks pane. Um, we probably should dig in a little bit to data view. Sure. Um, data view is great. Yeah. I am curious to see how that's being used. I know it's powerful. That's all I know. Fair. I, I like, I only just started using it. I actually, I had to get help today, but uh, you know, you do your part for the community and the community helps you. I That's love right. Communities. <laughs> That's the economy. Yes, it really is. So this is how data view works. Let's just make that go away for now. You have a bunch of YAML metadata at the top. You, you set this however you want it. So I personally chose to differentiate between articles, blog posts, and, um, some other thing, I don't even remember what it was. And then the reason I do that is because for World Building Magazine, I write blog posts and articles and they're like a totally different format. Mostly I write articles that are actually blog posts, but in that particular niche thing, I, they're different. So okay, you make this however you want it to be. And then Just curious I, though, sorry, you said yeah? you, you, you say that you do differentiate them, but if I'm looking at our utopia is always boring, I see type article. So I'm curious where, where's data view pulling from the other types or how does it? Oh, um, okay. So literally I am, I, I created it. So where did you see that? Maybe just keep going. Um, I, I'm sorry to interrupt. If you keep no, going, no, I think it'll, probably answer, it'll answer itself. So I, I basically, I created this. This is, this is metadata that I added. Okay. Article, what it's for, where it's at oh, in terms of things. Gotcha. And then I, I personally input a, like, when I last updated the status, which for this one was today. For most of these, it was today. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but so for example, in the published ones, I didn't do this for all of them. So bear with me, but this one, I already published this on my website. So I, I published it on this date. It's EK is the market. It's my personal website um, and it's an article. And then you can see I have these like hidden sort of things it was related to because it's an article. 
but I still want the backlinks. That's what comments are for. I was so happy the day that we got comments. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really, really, really need this ability. Um, so yeah, yes. so I, I, I make this. I decided this was the information I wanted to have access to. There are other make, things that you can do with it. Note. Okay. Huh? You, so, um, you, so you put that in each note and then mm -hmm. you can, then you can do something like a uh, data view. Yes. Uh, and basically you're pulling all that information. Uh, so could, could you go back to that one? Um, this, I'm just a couple steps slow on this, but oh, if you go back to the fault. note article, no, no, it's just cause I haven't used it before article and blog idea, that one. And for people interested, yes. So what we're seeing here is one of these block queries, block embed queries. What's this called? Uh, where you have the data view index and article and block Literally index. It's a block. It's, I don't know. It's a it's, I, I don't know. I don't know what they called it. I just know how to do it. It's the back tick, back tick, back tick thing. <laughs> exactly. It's the like, three back ticks. I'm sure data it has view. a name. <laughs> and then let's just uh, really quickly table sure. file size market. So what, what, how did you input this stuff? Is this, cause that's, that's where it's the cool. magic's happening. So, okay, so data view is, this line is is telling Obsidian um, that this is a code block. This is what the backtick means. The backtick means it's a code block. Mm -hmm. Data view is, this is code that we actually want you to do something with, right? So there are a couple of other things. I think you can do a query block too. I haven't mm -hmm. messed with those, but they exist. So there's a couple of different ways that you can interact with Obsidian with these like block things. Table is me telling, data view that I want it to output in a table, not a list. Gotcha. So you have okay. choices. Like um, I, I can show you a list later. So like you can see how this is a table. It has three columns and 11 billion rows. So it, then the, the headings that I want are file size and market. And it, it knows that I want the name. I don't, like, there might be a way to have it not give the name, but I don't, that's, that's like some advanced stuff there. And then I'm telling it where I want to, want it to pull the files from. I'm pulling from this particular folder. And this is where folders shine. Folders. <laughs> there you have it. This is where folders shine because um, data view may actually let you do the like multiple tags, but I, I don't know how and I couldn't figure it out and I wanted it, but it didn't work. Okay. So like if I'm looking for something that is, uh, that will, go to both my website or world building magazine if world building mag doesn't mag doesn't want it i'll put it on my website like that would be suitable for two places i haven't figured out how to do that it might be possible okay. i don't want to make it sound like the the plugin can't but i couldn't figure it out so um it really helps like limit and give you another thing to search from so you can search from a tag yeah. and a file path probably but I, I don't i don't know how um anyway so this is like a if then kind of thing. So I'm looking for files that are inside of this folder that have current status set as seed. So it will not show this file because this is not a seed, this is a published article. Okay. And then it gives me the list in order of file size, like the bigger file sizes at the top because I usually want the like most finished thing to work on next, right? Like most of the time, if I'm like, oh crap, I need an article. I have a deadline. I don't want the thing that hasn't had more than like six words on it. Like Very I don't, cool. I don't want that article. <laughs> yeah, no, that I, want, I want to work on that article, which is actually a conversation that I have with Killer Whale on the Discord, but I'm eventually going to turn oh. that into a like real thought process because it was a good conversation. And I said things thing. I think were smart. Yeah. <laughs> I get a lot of articles from various discords. I'm not going to lie because, you know, okay, I, well, okay, I so talk I, about stuff. Oh, no, sorry. sorry, what? Oh yeah. No, yeah. No, no. Yeah. Well, to your point, um, absolutely. It's what we're, we're entering the forum, if you will. Agora might be another term for it, but yeah, yeah. we enter into this place where we can, uh, you know, have the, it's a sharpening stone and we just all of a sudden say something and then I'm thinking, oh, I better record that for myself because I think it's, it's worth uh, saving, you know? Um, yeah. So absolutely, I feel that. Uh, thank you for showing the data view aspect. That was a little bit of a detour. I didn't mean to take you down like all the way into this, but I do think it's important uh, for people to see how powerful it is to manage um, article and blog ideas like you're oh, doing. 
I'm I'm gonna go. Okay, so like my plan is I'm gonna go back and add this YAML thing to all of my um all of my like I'm gonna make a template for all of my atomic notes so that okay. I can automatically add it to relevant maps of content. So that's I, I'm really liking this. Um, the big question then becomes though, um, ultimately, what are the YAML categories that that they'll be a, will kind of like settle on as being you know some of the main conventions. I know everyone will be different and unique. However, if you had to speculate for what you're about to do with uh, auto updating MOCs that way, what would you put? Would you stick with these four type market current status status updated? I wouldn't. So this is specifically because I'm working with articles, right? Sure. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm definitely going to keep this for the articles and, and this stuff. But what I want to do is I want to make it easier to not necessarily rely on the backlinks pane. It takes I you want out. I mean, to it, do it it's... as a to-do list. Like the backlinks pane will always be great, but I want it to be like a sort of a, a the same concept except specific things that I put there on purpose. Like, so when I'm when I'm sitting there going, oh, this would be great as an economics thing. I want to make those synthesis notes link into maps of content I already have. So what okay. I'll do is I'll do like here, you know what? Let's experiment. Let's see what happens. Sure, Let's yeah. go for it. Bear with <laughs> me if this is slow. Uh, wasn't this planning to do this, but you know what? Plans, <laughs> pshaw. That's right. All right, so somewhere in here, I had a story about how I was going to process this note. And boy, how dear, are you watching me process this note, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. East Africa's valuable commodities had traveled as far as China as early as the 10th century. China was one of two great economic powerhouses, the other being this caliphate. Caliphate? Caliphate. I knew that. OK, so this is a note that I kept because I cared about who China traded with in the 10th century. But I also care about Africa. Oops, that was supposed to be an L. Just worth noting the prompt that you're saying to yourself out loud, this is a you know where I cared about, and that helps you figure out what to title it. Oh yeah, I if I don't care about it, I just delete it. <laughs> That's great. So, all right, so I, I do care about who China traded with. I also care about um, how do I phrase this? I'm interested in how the economy of the monsoon world worked. Hmm. So you know what? Let's do that. Let's do the monsoon world. What is the monsoon world? If you had to guess based on only things I've taught you in the last 20 minutes. Based on what you've taught me, uh, the monsoon world is Indian Ocean. Um, and it has to do with the seasonality of the currents and how that affected trade between Africa to, uh, you know, India into China. That would be my guess. Good guess. Based on the monsoon winds allowing trade between China, the Swahili coast. And I'm not making a link for this because I know that page doesn't exist. And if I wind up doing something weird like the Swahili coasts or Swahili coast people or just Swahili, I don't want to mess up my links. I want to go in the backlink pane. I keep pointing at my screen like you can see me. <laughs> I want to go in the backlink pane and click them and have them automatically do it based on the aliases. That's why I, I avoid um, links to uncreated pages like it's oh, my job. Okay. I know oh. other people have a different method, but that is my method that I haven't seen a lot of people talk about. So I'm going to mention it Very um, nice. because they don't, it's not like Wikipedia uh, or media wiki where you can do a redirect. You can't redirect an obsidian. You have to make it right the first time. Mm -hmm. Talk with my hands. <laughs> so it was between the Swahili coast and India. Now I, I know I have a note about the Harappan civilization because I usually don't care about India per se. So I am going to say 
Harapan? Harapan? I actually don't know. I'm a bad person. I should learn that. So there you go. Indus Valley Civilization. And like, if I were Wikipedia, this article would actually be India. And it would like separate out between the Indian subcontinent and the Harappan civilization. Like I, I don't. I, I care about the Bronze Age. I, I care about ancient infrastructure. I care about really old trade. I don't. Like I, I mean, I care about the people of India. But like for the purposes of my knowledge vault, I'm not trying to learn everything. You can't learn everything. It's not possible. It, it isn't. And and you bring up a good point. Is like this. That's why it's the personal knowledge management system. And, and I, I think you know there's. There's some sort of slippery slope. Maybe it's, I don't want to mislabel things, but it kind of seems to be when our OCD tendencies get the better of us. And because it's called India, then somebody out there, including myself sometimes, thinks, well, I need to create an India note. I need to create the subcontinent and do all those things you just talked about. And then, you know, an hour later, I'm like, why did I spend all this energy and time doing this when it's not related to anything else that I'm currently interested in? And the reason is uh, because... You just did it, but you shouldn't have <laughs> because you're not doing anything with it. So I think um, I think it's really important what you just said, and I hope just want to pull that out as well, make a, a mini meal out of that one. I have more notes about the Swahili factor than I thought I did. So to pull this is the discovery you... process, right? Like, uh, yeah, exactly. So you're doing search, search terms. Yeah. So I I was I thought I knew there was one thing about Swahili. I typed it in. And then I had a bunch of stuff about the Swahili coast, which incidentally is like the like the pointy part of Africa, if you don't that's why. On the on the eastern side, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I teach a unit about DAOs in the Swahili coast, so sometimes I forget what is not just like casual common knowledge for the average American or <laughs> person of the world. Um, so yeah, so I have a bunch of stuff about the Swahili coast, which was a trade center, which seems relevant, right? Like we're talking about trade in the monsoon world. And I had a note about early African trade centers that I completely forgot about. <laughs> Good the power job. power of Zettelkasten. Yeah. And no, it's like fairly atomic. Yeah, so I've not. got that one. Trade in the monsoon world is what I'm already working on. Early African trade, okay, Swahili cities. Yeah, I'm just going to keep that whole note. I don't need to, I don't need to limit that anymore. Oops. All right, so that whole section, and then the Swahili themselves, Swahili society, Swahili merchants. Here's what I want. How nice. How nice. I was just thinking about going back to that book, and then you just pulled it up beyond the blue horizon. There we go. Enter on the keyboard. <laughs> but I always I want to click it. <laughs> yeah. I actually had a question about that book since you just pulled it up. I know this is a detour. Um, ah, by all but means. do you ever uh, cull the the notes that you've extracted in, in Beyond the Blue Horizon by Brian Fagan? So there you have his his book. Um, and you had a lot of different pulled notes. Do you always keep those? I'm just curious if you have an opinion on that. So I, uh, that's an excellent question. And to spare you sitting here for 20 minutes watching me like go through that process, what I, what I normally do is um, I will start from something that looks like, that looks like this, right? Like this, this is a raw data dump. And okay. what I normally do is I go through and I turn it into something that is much more like this. And as I'm going, if I'm like, why did I highlight that? That is a useless piece of information. I will absolutely delete it. I have deleted things before. But even when you've even when I've like deleted stuff, I wind up with like it's still here. It's still seven thousand words long. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, it's still long. Yeah, like, totally. But I mean you can see, like, I I have notes to myself of I had a question, useful for contextualization, useful for this, useful for that. This is interesting because like, this is all linked stuff. Mm -hmm. It's all my economics notes and it's- Look how nice this looks though. I mean, I have to say there's, it's a, you have a pretty nice theme here. Thank and, you, it's palatinate. I made it specifically for this because nobody else 
cares about the little quotation mark on the block quote, which is there specifically for when I paraphrase stuff, because if I have a long quote, I'll paraphrase it. And I still want to differentiate it from my own thought. So I have a little code block that, um, here, hmm. you look intrigued, so I'm going to show you. I am. I am. So I have a block quote paraphrase. class oh. for, um, here. You see how there's not a little quotation mark? Mm -hmm. I paraphrased it. To, to wow. Okay. So, you, gotcha. I That's really nice like because the paraphrase is that strange area. Yeah, I didn't want to misquote area. it somewhere, but I didn't mm -hmm. want to like claim it as my own. And if I use this mm -hmm. as a reference for something, I want to know like that I didn't just pop off with that or pull it. Like I don't want to. I don't want to think. You know, like. Is this something that I maybe misstated? Like there are some concepts that I'm reading about that I, I am I am wildly unqualified to talk about, right? Like I barely know what some of these words mean. I have never heard of some of these civilizations as I'm reading this academic textbook on the topic of the entirety of Africa from like nomads, not even from, from pre-hominoids to the 1800s is the is the scope of civilizations of Africa by Christopher Eckert. Like I a lot right like i do not have a phd in history i am more learned on the topic than a lot of people but i don't have a phd in this there's mm -hmm. stuff in the world that if you if i had a phd it would still be new information to me because the world is large so mm -hmm. i just try to differentiate between like stuff okay I, learned myself. I am curious about this but i think we should keep it going so ba <laughs> basically you made what you did is you made a block quote class mm -hmm. uh, a special type of class for your CSS to, yeah. to not have the quotations there, which is very cool. And yeah, something else I try to when you're in. just highlighting something, you get these really long things, really there. I don't, I don't want all of this. I can't engage with all of this. Not all of this is the important part. Mm -hmm. So I will change it. I will go bloop. Bloop. I'm not afraid of HTML. I am. <laughs> I am. It's a little scary, but it's fine. So, okay. What's the part of this I care about? River pilots who first sailed into the. Okay, so this I care about talks about Egypt. Navigating muddy waters. Everyone would have shipped out with surrounding rod or knotted and weighted cord. Oh, that's cool. Land surveyors, civil engineering. There you go. <laughs> civil engineering tools were useful for sailors. Pilots would gauge the distance from land, expert at taking and interpreting depth. Much of their knowledge, landmarks come from inshore fisher folk. That seems obvious, like, duh, I don't, I don't need you to tell me that that large scale ocean sailors got their skills from practicing in like I don't need that. That's obvious, right? Mm -hmm. I care. And it's redundant. This says the same thing, which is like, I'm not criticizing Brian Fagan. Sometimes you have to say things twice, but this is the same thing as this, right? Like we don't need to have the same thing in here three times. This part's interesting. Pilots would gauge the distance. Taking and interpreting the depths, local currents, feel of the wind. That's important, right? Like, that's interesting. I didn't hmm. realize that sailors would analyze how the wind feels in order to determine stuff. I should have, but I didn't. And you know, this is really two different thoughts. They're both interesting, but it's really two different thoughts. So let's separate this out a little bit. Bloop. Isn't there a word for that? Something, something atomic? <laughs> I've heard of such a term. <laughs> so matter for conjecture, I don't care how far they went. I don't really care about Crete. Like somebody will, right? Like this is important to somebody. But to me, I, like, I'm not sitting here trying to figure out whether or not the Egyptians did blah, 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 blah. Uh, it's enough for me to say the Egyptians traded with Crete, right? Like that's gotcha. enough. Let's, let's so make it, it shorter. So in these block, uh, block quote paraphrase areas, you're doing two things. One, you're deleting 
So it's it's not going to be verbatim. And two, you are kind of adding your own thoughts there, like you just yeah. did. Yeah, okay. I'm paraphrasing. Oh, that's what they call it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Okay. This Wonderful. this is interesting to me. This tells me about Egyptian ships, who the Egyptians traded with, and so this is about how Egyptian how Egyptian ships changed because of cultural diffusion. Spelling is hard. And then this was location. Right? Unique mm -hmm. identifiers. They're great. So that is basically how we do that. So this is how Egyptians learned to navigate the ocean. OK. And I could probably learn. So you know what? That's not useful, right? Like That's what it is. But that's not useful. That's not information. That's not what I learned. Egyptians learned to navigate the ocean from, how do we want to phrase that? Coastal sailors and land and used land surveying tools. Now I have something useful. Mm -hmm. I have a claim. I have evidence. And I can delete my note. Really? This is an atomic note now. It is, yes. That is that is a perfectly functional atomic note. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I'm going to do that's going to make a whole bunch of people cringe is I'm going to leave it like this. This is my controversial thing. I'm not going to move it into its own file. I'm cool with that. <laughs> and the reason is sheer laziness. Plus, I, I just, I find it a little bit messy. Because if I did, I would have to, like, do a new citation thing. I would have to make it, like, link back. And the note refractor plugin is great, but it's not perfect. And I can do everything I want with this atomic note with it as a subheading. Yeah, I think so. I, I think that, well, I, I think laziness <laughs> is always a good driver uh, or non-driver, if you will. But I think, yeah, when it's something like a book or, you know, a big thing, it does kind of make sense to you to keep them together uh, because you can, we can link to headers or even to blocks. So that way it's all within the book, um, yeah. which is kind of the big object. Like um, when there are some big objects out there, books, people, like these things that we can just kind of associate with whatever it is that we're thinking about. So I think that's important to kind of keep those together. Yeah, and, and I, what I discovered when I, I used the refractor plugin, I, I tried splitting them up with civilizations of Africa. So I was like, man, like a 7,000 word note, that's really long. So I did it and I got to here. And the thing is, I don't always give it a heading. I don't actually always want to go through the trouble of making those notes properly atomic. It's a time consuming process. I just want to do the parts that matter to me now and keep the parts that might matter to me later and not make this a job. Exactly. It's not a job. This isn't yeah. a job. This is something I do for a purpose. The job is not making beautiful notes. The job is writing articles. Mm -hmm. So even if I don't touch this for another three days, which is extremely possible, I've still gotten something useful out of it. And further, I could go write a whole article about tribute economies and the nature of economy. Really, I've, I've mm -hmm. still done that. I have still, based on this, you know, process where I really only got like, you know, three or four notes in, I've still gotten a lot of useful stuff out of it. And as I go through it and process it, which is a lengthy process, I will still have more and more and more to mine from it. But the point isn't to turn my literature note into a beautiful literature note. That's not, that's not why we're here. That's what we have to not lose sight of. So I can go give myself a to-do list, finish processing. I can type, I swear. Finish processing that. And then I'm going to update. I read some more of 
beyond the blue horizon. And my big takeaway for the day was, here's the important part, and my big takeaway for the day was that tribute economies are an, what's the word I want, in, in are a, this isn't how I want to phrase it, a type of thing that hasn't been plumbed enough in fiction. Hmm. There's so much more we could do with how the people of China cared about having the surrounding cultures pay tribute to them and why Why do I do this? Because every month I go back and I look at everything in my reading log and I sit down and go, all right, what's important? What's not important? What's worth sharing? What should I follow up on now with the space of a month? Is there something that I like, you know, should really go back to? Do I have some new insight with the space of a month? I try to sit down and actually keep track of what I read, but not every pile of nonsense thing that I read while I was killing time waiting for my coffee. Right? Like, it's not ask a manager, like, you know, random advice blog thing that I keep track of. It's stuff that matters to me that I keep track of. Mm -hmm. You can't, mm -hmm. you can't spend more time keeping track of things than you do enjoying things. That's, that way lies misery. But you should probably take some time to reflect on what you learn that matters to you. Because otherwise you're going to forget it. Right? Like I had completely forgotten about like six of the things that came up during this, this process. Like, oh yeah, I had talked about the Swahili Coast a lot. Oh yeah, I actually do know a ton about that. And then I put it together and I did stuff with it. So also noted, so actually that's an accomplishment, right? Like that's not a reading log thing. Hmm. I, let's reflect. I had some interesting insights about economics today. So when I do my monthly review, one, I know what I cared about, what I was thinking about, and then I can remind myself, we should think harder as a species about things that aren't money, because money is not the only thing that makes the world go around. Boom. Right? Yeah. I had an That's insight just... today oh, and I wrote man. it down and I filed it away and I'll come back to it. And that's something that came out of reading a very dry academic textbook about the nature of sailing throughout history. <laughs> there are so many um, minor insights here that, that I, that I hope that those, I don't mean minor in any uh, derogatory <laughs> way, but I mean Small that I want moments. to pull out. Small things that, that I want to pull out to make sure that anyone watching this might might take away from it. And that's what I wanted to say is, as you're doing your reading log, it's not just I read this, you're, you're saying, here's another prompt, like if I'm just going to really like, pull it out and, and stare at it, you have a prompt that says my big takeaway. And then you write about it. And yeah. that's you're forcing yourself to to be an active participant in in what you're putting together. You're not just saying I read this. And then that that's uh, that's lazy in that bad sense because then it's less um, solidified in the mind. And then I like that you do have a, a monthly review, obviously. So then you can go back and, like you said, with the space of a month or whatever that that space is, and, and you can look at it with uh, fresher eyes and kind of see what really you know stood out. So this is okay. So what parts of <laughs> our process are we currently or of your process? do we still need to cover or have we? Yeah, I mean, I feel like we've covered everything that I, that I do for like, I mean, like, I'm not going to sit here and make you watch me write an article, right? Like you, yeah. you, you heard me opine on the topic of an article under normal circumstances. I would have opined in such a way into my phone, which would have outputted, you know, voice to text into obsidian mobile. And then it would have become a thing that I edited. So I think we've hit all of the stages. And you kind of just do the, like you opine like you just did on this call, right? Like during that yeah. uh, new uh, MOC note when you're just talking out loud and, and quizzing me, that was yeah. essentially what you're doing. <laughs> you're asking a lot of questions. You're asking a lot of whys and um, you're, you're, you're digging into it. You're, you're having a conversation. Yeah. Sometimes with my phone. It's more fun with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
The phone doesn't talk back as much. The phone does not talk back, nor does my son. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Sounds like that's going to happen pretty soon, though. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I guess any questions? Like, was this helpful? <laughs> well, this well, no, this was um, in, in tremendously helpful. I um, I was hoping to save a few for the end, but then I couldn't sure. help myself but interject questions while we went. So I'm trying to think uh, as. I did my best to just ask as, as we went along because it was um, so ins inspiring that way. Another thing that stood out for me is, you know, um, the power of YAML with data view as, as something as a, a simple solution. I guess one thing that I'm looking forward to is I saw how you're using it for blogs and article ideas. I'm hoping to also see how it could be used for uh, MOCs or other types of notes. Um, yeah, that's some, that's on my to-do list, sort of. I haven't, I really do think that what's going to happen is, like, you would use it as, like, a tag. The problem is, I don't, I don't know how well uh, data view works for if it's multiple tags. So you should be able to just tag it with whatever your MOC is. So, like, if you have a economics MOC, you should be able to do, like, MOC economics or like literally just tags economics and then if it's also marriage right like if it's if it's an if it's a thing about why people pay dowries for for you know marriage then it would go into both and then i think data view will let you just promulgate a list of everything that's tagged with that so if you did that you wanted basically you wanted to add it to moc that and then you would tag it like that and then data view would just spit out a list of everything you've given that tag. Yeah, it's interesting. And then you would, as you, as you, so like, it's like the backlinks pane, but more, more fine grained. And then what I would personally do is as I actually manually add it into my MOC um, with, so like marriage, I, I don't like to just have, like, this isn't just a list, right? Lists are, worthless. I have a list over here. Like my, mm -hmm. my list is my files. Mm -hmm. um, I want to know why it's in this list. But like, yes. I don't, I'm not always the best at updating it as I go. What I want is a thing at the bottom that's like unprocessed and then all of like, like a to do list, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't have to find mm -hmm. it in the backlinks pane with all of the things that are linking to it to say do this and also linking to it because it's useful. Yeah, or relevant, like I want to separate those things out. Oh, yeah, and data totally. view basically lets you search. It, it lets you give yourself a to-do list without having to navigate to it. Yeah. No, you just nailed it there. That that makes the perfect sense. Perfect sense because then we haven't done it yet. <laughs> okay. So the way to use I'm just saying this out loud for myself. Um, the way to use data view for MOCs is um, as a as a curated backlinks, um, a temporary curated backlinks list. Potentially, I'm not saying that's the only way, but that might be a way to experiment with yeah. where it's at the bottom of your MOC note, you still have all your custom context that you've manually um, gone through the the fire to create and you figure out all this nice structure, they've had interactions, conversations, and you say, okay, we'll start with why here, get the definitions down, then we'll go into some details, relevant newsletters, relevant newsletters, atomic notes, questions, references. Okay, so that's our MOCs. And then below all that, we'll have the unsorted stuff that's related to marriage. And, and then we'll have whatever data we think is relevant. And then we can have it as part of that table at the bottom. Okay. I, I'm just talking out loud. No, no. Um, yeah. I mean, that's, that's sort of how I envision it in my head. Basically I like how that. I have over here, like where this is a tag with where I'm going to put it, it should be possible. The only thing is my lit notes are really long and like YAML has to be at the top. So I don't know. I, I haven't really dug into it. There, there is definitely potential there, particularly with like, real atomic notes like this is the downside of doing it my way is that mm. if you have actual like just like so like you would do it with your this stuff right like i could have this have some kind of metadata at the top that's like and i have a text expander don't mind me it's hilariously hard to make this okay there we go my my dash dash turns into an m dash and i really need to change that um okay so we would want this to be tag right and then what we would do is to 
be processed. You want some kind of data view thing that does. Mm, that's not it. Data view. There we go. Okay. That's what you want. So we want some kind of data view thing that does this where. Gotcha. I'm actually like, I don't really use YAML a lot, so we're going to pretend that's right. Okay. Actually, just for the sake of simplicity. Yes. <laughs> Quotes, okay. okay. So we don't have a current status. We just want a table. We're just going to do it real easy for now. That should theoretically work. Hey, it worked. Whoa. Look at that. <laughs> Except we actually want a list. Look at that. Look at me. I did that <laughs> first time. And look, it like doesn't even look weird, right? Like it's it just. It does not look weird. It totally fits there. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's pretty impressive. how you could do it without having, the only thing is it won't, um, because it's a data thing, it won't show up in the backlinks, but like the whole point is that it's not processed, right? Like you, mm -hmm. you, I should process it later, but at least it's still there. I don't have to go finding it. I don't have to go looking around. It's just there. Mm -hmm. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. 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 Oh, well, it is. I must say it is. So that is the stuff that the funny thing about some knowledge management, personal knowledge management thing is uh, the, the, the things that we try, they work on longer timescales where we don't really know the results until, you know, a few weeks or months or whatever it is down the road. Um, and this is one that is worth experimenting with and kind of seeing how it feels after a few months, um, for, for me at least with, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause the immediate weakness is what if I want to add it to MOCs and I'm sure that it's possible. I just, I don't actually know how, like there's, there's gotta be a way to use like tags and you can definitely have multiple tags. So I, I don't know, but like as a proof of concept, that's what it would look like, which is pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. It's pretty <laughs> impressive just to have it at the bottom like that. Um, yeah. Okay. Very cool. Okay. What else? I, I think we've covered almost everything and this is extremely, extremely helpful. So what else do we need to, to mention? I don't know. I guess I uh, started with the book. We did the resonance calendar thing. We've done the reading roundups. We've done the literature notes. So I've, I think I've shown you how I match. I don't know if I've shown you how I match like multiple. So one of the things that I do, um, I could just show you really quick is when I'm sure. synthesizing things. Um, here we go. A lot of the times if I'm reading a text, I will have a thought and then I will see something else in the literature in the literature notes that's like the same topic. What I usually do is I will pull them out into just a, a statement and then all of the proofs. Okay. And then I have the proof. And this is why I, I keep the big literature notes because I do this as I go. And if you refractor later, all of these links break. Oh, interesting. Because they're going to headings. And if you use the refactor plugin, it will just make it like just the mm. title. Yeah. And the idea of going through every atomic note that I have and update it makes me want to die inside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. totally. So that's, that's, that's the real reason I do it that way. But um, this is an example. You can imagine how if I had come across two or three different things in the, in the, um, the Brian book about sailing, like I could have put them mm -hmm. together like, oh yeah, these, th these three things are all on the same topic. Let me put them over here. So I do that a lot. Um, and sometimes when I have questions, they go into the question style, but relatively rarely. I'm not actually going to put the why do tribute economy questions exist in here. I, I know why they exist. I was, I was just messing with you. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> it was a little bit messing with uh, you. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. But like as that, a thought that... experiment, not just to mess oh, with totally. you. Like, yeah, no, no, no. That's your and I and um, I really appreciate the. You're obviously a, a great teacher because you you keep everyone engaged and on their toes. Um, okay, well, this is the only other thing, and this might um, detour us from this. But is there is there a simple final product um, to show us, like from your blog or an article or something that relates to 
to uh, this. Sure, here, let's uh let's see what we've got. Um probably not those. Here we go. And this is a good one. So I'm not done this. This is a very much a work in progress. But as I was reading um the civilizations of Africa, I came across this notion of sacral kingship. And the idea is that um there in, in various ancient societies in Africa, and not just Africa, there um we find these tombs with with you know people of great wealth who are buried with like 15 or 20 like 20 year olds who were very clearly just like sort of mass killed together wow. which to the modern sentiment is a very like why are we why are we killing your attendants to go with you into the afterlife but it's actually a like a weirdly common thing uh like the egyptians um may have had it i don't actually remember um but the there there was definitely sacral queenship in bronze age iraq which i came across in a totally different book and the people of Carthage practiced like human sacrifice and, and so did the Aztecs. And why is human sacrifice such a such a thing? I don't know. I, I don't I don't have that answer yet, but it's definitely a thing. And and does that relate to the terracotta army? And and what about the, the Scythian burial practices where they put their favorite horse in the tomb with them to go into the afterlife? Like what is it about humanity where we die and then other people die with us is wait is that similar to the, the sati in in um in in india where there's this practice where a woman will basically like throw herself into her husband's funeral pile because wait that happened in carthage when dido killed herself to protect her people from being married off to an african king what is going on with humanity where this is a thing that keeps coming up and stuff i've read so you can see it's, yeah where you can you can see my links right like i got this mm -hmm. from civilizations of africa and i i wrote a thing about Alyssa of carthage that was based on um Alyssa of carthage is dido like the the legendary dido okay. of founding of carthage context uh, so i read an academic like pdf about her once and then brother of kings has it and it just keeps coming up and i noticed the connection and i'm i'm working on turning it into a final product and right now it's just amusing but at, at some point this is going to become an article that looks much more like this right infrastructure in ancient civilizations i have a thesis i have a statement i have things to say on the topic oh my god do i have things to say on the topic of infrastructure in ancient civilization civil engineering my friends did not begin with rome civil engineering did not even begin with the city-state humans were building enormous miles-long walls like before the we built the first city we used them as hunting traps large public infrastructure products predate human civilization it is not a roman invention I have really strong feelings. I'm happy to soapbox about that at length and have done so on Dan Komold's blog. Um, like, uh, the, it's just, wood isn't primitive and all you really need to build an enormous infrastructure process is a government and a bunch of people. Mm. That's it, that's all, that's all you need. You need a bunch of people and a government. And I mean government in the loose, possible sense you need a bunch of people and somebody in charge mm -hmm. and like only kind of you need a bunch of people and consensus. consensus that's it that's what you need for civil engineering you need a bunch of people in consensus boom done <laughs> that's it that's all you need yeah wow you need a bunch of people and a consensus that is necessary and that is what you need for civil engineering and i'm going to write that down And that's an article that I have bookmarked because you have that. I hope you enjoy there. it. You need a bunch oh, of people, I, I people and a consensus to do something. And anything is possible from a, from a civil engineering perspective. Infrastructure, no. The Romans did not invent civil engineering. In I'm going to pop that. <laughs> no, no, I have so many feelings about that. I'm going to pop that over into insights. Did I move insights. the right thing? Yes, I did. 
Uh, no, not copy, delete, come on. Insights, so I should probably name that, right? And the Zoom thing is messing with me. Okay, so let's make that shorter. People plus consensus and you can, and anything is possible. And, and infrastructure building. Hmm. People plus consensus equals infrastructure projects. Which, which um, makes me think about the struggles that America has had with infrastructure week, which is uh, the week that keeps on going for the past <laughs> several, several years and has never happened. Whereas then if you look, the argument goes anyways, if, if you look at um, China, for instance, they can erect however many beds in Wuhan to deal with the pandemic virtually overnight and just do insane um, projects virtually overnight, potentially because of this consensus wherever that's coming from um, versus the lack of consensus in, a, in America currently with infrastructure. We lack the political will. We do not lack the technology. And people always think that all it takes to do something is technology. And what it actually takes is political will. The people of Jericho, I don't remember how many millions of years ago, could build walls that dwarf most American houses. And all it takes is consensus and people. You know what's funny to that point as well? Um, we're watching For All Mankind, which is uh, an alternate reality of what happens if the Russians landed on the moon first. And it, w what it does in this series is it gives the political will to, to both countries to continue um, their space explorations and advancements. And so it's, it's interesting to see how they, they, they paint a world where things, some things happen a little bit sooner or they still haven't happened yet in, in our reality because we, we've, la we've abandoned that will, which is starting to pick up speed, hopefully it, it appears with some private enterprises getting involved in it. But yeah, just to your point of political will, um, I really dig that. That's me, full of insights <laughs> about social studies. <laughs> yes. Wonderful. Well, Eleanor, this was uh, just fantastic. And there is so much that I've received from this that I've just gotten from this. It gets me really excited. Um, and I know this will help other people too. So I thank you so. So, so much for, for this. Any uh, parting words before we stop the recording? Just don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Is that Voltaire? It's like seven different people. I got it from a old, I don't maybe I got it from a boss. I used to I used to work um, in the special education department and um, schools are chronically uh, underfunded is maybe the wrong word, like not to get political, but like there's just never enough resources in the school to do it. Well, like, why ever that might be, I don't want to say it's because there's not enough money, but there's there's just never enough resources to, to help all of the people who need to be helped. There's just impossible. You can't do it. And I had a boss once who, you know, when we were getting overwhelmed because there was just so much, he's like, if you can't do it perfect, do it good enough. The important thing is that you do something. And it stuck yeah. with me. And whether that's Voltaire or, you know, some guy on the <laughs> internet, the, the, the point is that you just don't get bogged down in making your notes perfect. Yes. Keep your eye on the prize and remember what you're there for and what you're trying to do and just think critically and engage in metacognition and, and figure out why you're doing something. And if you, what you're spending time on does not serve the why, get rid of it. I spent three hours trying to bug fix Git today and I it just, I deleted it because it wasn't solving my problem. Like it's supposed to be a version control that works automatically. And after it basically destroyed my vault today because I pulled when I shouldn't have and blah, 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 blah. And somehow it got moved and erased and like, I, it wasn't worth it. It's the perfect tool for what I need. And if it doesn't work, it's not worth it. I would rather have good enough. Windows has something that does almost something the same. I already have Obsidian Sync and you know, like, I don't need it to be the perfect, most beautiful tool that any programmer has ever made. I just need it to work. Mm -hmm. Your notes are the same. That's all I got. Well, well said. <laughs> so let's all give Eleanor a round of applause. If you're watching this online, 
Now this, this is great. So um, let me let me hit. The question is then: uh, Is there anywhere where we can learn more about your work and what you're up to? I, like you said, you're on staff at World Building Magazine. Yeah. Uh, I write. Um, I write for a couple of different outlets, but my my website uh, has everything. I I post um, links whenever I do something interesting in the world. It has. You can find me at the GitHub and the Goodreads and, and Pinterest and Medium and all the all the links are on my website. It's a. I'm. I don't track anybody for anything. I'm not making money at anything. You, you can use the RSS feed. You can sign up for my newsletter where I write about research once a week. It's not a marketing thing. It's just, I learned a cool thing about wool. You should go read about wool. Here's some links about wool. I really like wool or beetles or here, I'll show you. I think I'm still screen sharing here. I write about domestication and dams and couriers and beetles and arrows and tombs and sewers and hell or horse boats. Horse boats are cool. Horse boats. <laughs> they, 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 uh, they're paddle boats powered by horses. Who knew? So if you find that kind of thing interesting, you're welcome to sign up for my newsletter. I write once a week, I'm not trying to sell you anything except for random facts about the world. I like teaching. It's fun. Yeah, this is so cool. I, uh, I'm signing up and now th this is great. But if, if for, for you, you watching, you need to uh, check out Eleanor's website because I was blown away at how, uh, how much amazing information is there. I opened up 10 tabs immediately and I actually plan on reading these tabs. So it's, it's definitely worth doing. Uh, yeah, well, thanks so much, Eleanor. Isn't seeing Eleanor's process greatly inspiring? She started with reading notes from Kindle and took us through a process that has now led to a final published product on Tor.com that you can find in the description below. This is paradigm shifting, folks. Whether you are a writer or a world builder, using linked-based frameworks can unlock a whole new world of creative vitality. As always, there are a lot more of these inspiring tours I hope to showcase because they show how powerful and personal the process of thinking and growing ideas can be. If you enjoyed this, you know what to do. Share this gem, share on the interwebs, share with your writing friends, and of course, subscribe and like if you haven't already. Until next time.